Ah, hello there. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Sokman Gill, and today we're here to talk a little bit about the turban. Who wears a turban? What's it stand for? And we're even going to show you how to tie one. So let's get right into it. So, who wears a turban? Well, turbans have been around for centuries. There's many different cultures and religions that wear turbans in their own unique and respective ways. Some of which include Africans, Jews, Sikhs, Muslims, Rastafarians, and many more. For the most part, the turban signifies strength, royalty, and honor. But today we're going to talk a little bit more about the Sikh turban, also known as a Dastar or Bhak. Why do Sikhs wear turbans? Well, the turban is a common fashionable item amongst many cultures. But for Sikhs, it represents our way of life and our faith. So when the Sikh faith was developing from the 15th through 18th centuries, the turban was only worn by the higher class, or the elites of society. However, a core teaching in Sikhism is all about equality, meaning there is no high or low amongst us. Therefore, it was mandated that all Sikhs initiated into the Khalsa wear the five kates, kates, kanga, kara, karpani, kishara, and tie turbans on their heads, which showed equality amongst everyone in society. And it showed a sign of respect. Wearing a turban hasn't always been easy. Sikhs throughout the world have faced many hardships throughout history and extreme racism. Some Sikhs couldn't even uphold certain jobs because of the way they looked. Kids were bullied, and in some instances, it was a matter between life and death. But in more recent times, Sikhs have stayed strong with their beliefs. And instead of changing the way they look, they stand more proud than ever. You can now see predominant Sikh figures everywhere. From politics, to fashion, to movies, YouTube, late night shows, doctors, engineers, lawyers, rappers, you name it, and they're there. Now you're probably wondering, well, I've seen so many different turban variations. Do uh, little kids wear turbans as well? And how about women? Do women wear turbans? Well, for starters, yes, women also wear turbans as they've played a vital role throughout Sikh history. Kids, on the other hand, tie a different style of turban called the butka. Think of it as a man bun at the front of the head wrapped with the fabric. Now, as this child grows older, he's responsible to learn how to tie his own turban. The turban is not a hat, which can be taken off and put on instantly. It's tied every morning, layer by layer, with the utmost humility, love, and passion, as it's our crown. At the end of the day, it's taken off the same way, layer by layer, so in no shape or form it resembles a hat. Now in regards to variations, Sikhs tie many different styles of turbans, some of which include the Damala, the Gold Zastar, Yuki Kenyan style, Bariala Shai, Watani Pug, or the traditional Nog Pug. Now, no matter what style or color you choose, they all represent the same thing at the end of the day. But today, I'm going to show you how I tie my style. Now, in order to start, we need to get ourselves a turban. So come on, let's go. So as you can see, there are thousands of beautiful turbans behind me. Some of the fabrics include full belt, mamo, and rubia belt. But today, we're going to go with the yellow 3.75 rubia belt turban. And we're ready to go. So now that we have the turban, it's time to put it in the wash, just so we can soften up the fabric. And now we wait. And now it's time to hang dry. And now we wait. Now, most turbans don't require you to iron them out, but I like mine extra clean. So we're gonna go for it. So now we do the booty which is the folding process. So you take the right side, match it to the left, the left, back to the right, and then we're gonna do it one more time. The right, back to the left, leaving a half inch space. Then, you can just pull it in. And there's our foodie. Now we can actually go start tying our turban. So for starters, what I do is I bring my hair to the front. And now, just like any house, the base is the most important part. So for the foundation, what I do is I take my hair, I twist it up, I use my hand at the very top to flatten out the surface, and I create this donut shape. I open the donut up a bit, and then next, I use a patka. The patka plays a very vital role. It kind of keeps the hair in place and nice and tidy. Next up, we have the slay. This is gonna tuck in all the extra hairs. Now we got the 50. You'll see why the 50 is used at the very end. It's to create this triangle-like shape. So now for the bug itself, I usually get the first lug, hang it above my ear, and have it reach my jawline. 
Now I take that LUD, have it right above my eyebrow and over my ear. Now the second LUD, this is gonna set out the spacing for the rest of the LUDs. So as you can see, sometimes I use my hand just to flatten out the surface. Again, higher on one side and lower on the other. As you can see, the lards are all equally spaced apart. Oh wow, they're looking pretty symmetrical. So now for the last lard, what I do is I take the first lard, I pull it back, and then I fluff it out. And then we use our handy dandy slide to clean it all up. And as you can see, it's nice and clean. So for the last and final LUD, I usually keep it a little bit wider than the others. And now once I'm done figuring out where I want to place it, I get my little pin and I pin down that last LUD. And now my hands are free to do whatever I want. Oh, and you can see that little triangle at the very front. So now I tuck in the last LUD, I use my slide to clean it all up, and we're almost there. So now for the very final step, we take the back lard, fold it, and tuck it in. And voila! And there we have it. That's how you tie a turban. Thanks again for watching. If you learned something new today, please do share it with your friends. Until then, this is Sukhan Gill signing out.